Hey, Bass Geek here, and today we're starting our ledge series, and the first bait we're gonna talk about is the big feather jigs. Let me start off with a little bit of terminology. Now guys, these are Cumberland Pro Lures prayer jigs. Now, you'll hear me refer to them a lot of times as a preacher jig, and that's what a lot of guys that have been around forever and a day will call these feather jigs because the old story goes is that some guy, some preacher in Alabama were the first one to actually come out with these and start making these. So they got kind of the, you know, one size fits all name, the preacher jigs. But like I said, these are the Cumberland Pro Lures prayer jigs. Now, let's talk about why I like that feather jig on the ledges. Number one, because it could be one of two things and these things are super subtle. They really mimic a dying shad and a dying shad of many different sizes. They come in a lot of different head weights, like this is a half ounce, this is my favorite an ounce, but you can control your fall rate with the different sizes, and you can also control the depth that you fish them with the different weights. Now, as far as weights go, probably my go-to is gonna be that, you know, three quarters, if I'm fishing really shallow, we're talking 20, 15, that area, uh, I'm probably gonna go with a half. A lot of guys will even go, you know, smaller than that. If I need a very subtle presentation, I might back down, but generally a half is almost as small as I ever go. I like the fall rate a little faster because I, I like to trigger reaction bites. Now, like I said, you can fish these a couple of different ways, but we'll get to that in a minute. As far as colors, there's several colors and there's several companies that make these. But like I said, my go-to is absolutely the Cumberland Pro Lures and they make them in a couple of different kinds. You know, the longer feathers, the shorter feathers, you know, the shad style. So they make them in a couple of different kinds, colors and weights, and that's what I like. Now they also make them in a pro model. A pro model's got more of a swim bait head on it. Now for me, this is great if you're gonna swim it across the bottom. And that's a presentation that with these, I just don't use a lot. So generally, I kind of like that traditional with the head and you can kind of see here, this is one that I've used for years. I don't know if you can, Anyway, there's a lot of teeth marks on this bait. I about wore the feathers off of it, to be honest with you. But anyway, all that being said, as far as colors go, almost 90% of the time, I'm going with white. Now, as far as trailers go, rarely do I ever tip these with a trailer, but sometimes I do. And there's only two that I ever use. One is a fluke style bait some sort of soft plastic jerk bait, a straight tail, just to give it a little more girth, really spread those feathers out to give it a little more, you know, size. But at the same time, those tails stay extremely subtle. Now the other way, and generally I'll do this, if they seem a little more active, I'm gonna put me some sort of paddle tail on here. Most of the time I'm gonna go with a ribbed swim bait, but that's generally what I'm gonna go with when I tip these. Now the color, I'm generally gonna go with white or ghost. I'm gonna match it in. Like I said, I, I don't care what the watercolor is from super clear when I'm using these, I would say 98% of the time I'm going white. So I want something to kind of blend in and match that, whether it be with a little paddle tail to give it just a little more action when I'm moving it, or whether it be, you know, something that's just gonna be subtle, but I like it to flare that feather skirt and that buck hide out a little bit. Now, let's get into 
the equipment that I like to use. Now again, guys, generally a half ounce to an ounce. My ounce is really my go-to size anytime I'm out there. I mean, to be God honest with you, if I'm fishing 20 feet or more, I'm going to be fishing that three quarters to one ounce size. Now, when we get into talking about rods, the one thing that I wanna make sure you always do is protect that investment. Make sure you go and check out TRC rod covers. And I always tell everybody this, especially for you shoreline guys, this tip is extremely hard. You're not going to break those tips off. Now, let's jump in and actually talk about the rods themselves. This rod is actually my flipping rod. So I will throw this on basically a flipping rod. This is a seven foot seven, a seven six, seven seven is great. This is a heavy action, fast tip. I mean, you're throwing a jig and it's one ounce. This is gonna be perfect. I like a high speed reel. This is a seven five to one. I like a, maybe just a touch slower than that, but seven, 7075 is perfect. We'll get into that when we talk about retreat. Now, line size. Generally, I keep 20 pound fluorocarbon on. I, you guys know I'm gonna fish fluorocarbon. If you're in dirty water, you can get away with braid. It's actually gonna slow the fall down. Again, we'll talk about that retrieve a little bit later. I like the fluorocarbon because I fish a lot of clear water. 20 pound, probably my favorite size is going to be that 15 pound fluorocarbon, 15 to 17 out there. The other rod that I'm going to fish it on is going to be this. This is my new spoon ripper. And you know, you fish these baits a lot like the way you fish a spoon, but this is my new spoon ripper. Now you'll notice I've got loose on both of them. This is the uh, tournament MP. That's what I'm going with on this for right now. And again, this is a, uh, seven five to one gear ratio so it's going to pick up line pretty quick that is a big deal you do need to pick up line very quickly this is both of these are from dixie custom rods by the way make sure you go check them out like I say always there's links in the description down below for all the equipment that I'll, i use like i said i do generally like 17 pound test fluoro on these so I'll put most of the time, especially because these are uh, micro guides, I'll put at least two casts on there. That way, you know, I'm not having to cut down a cast uh, or a cast worth of, or, or half a cast worth of, you know, fluorocarbon. I can cut and retie, cut and retie, cut and retie. Don't waste line. I feel like I don't waste line as much that way. But generally, this is also a 7.5. Now this is an extra heavy, fast tip, but this is also gonna work, especially with that three, uh, three quarters, that ounce. This is gonna be really nice for you. So now we're gonna talk about retrieve. So guys, there's really a couple of different retrieves that I wanna talk about. Now, the one retrieve, I'm kinda of talking a little more in the traditional sense. Again, with the pro model, for me, the pro model is, it, it, you know, it's gonna kinda of flop over when it sits down. So I like the traditional model and yeah, they may roll a little bit, but with that round head, I feel like they're going to stay there. And with the 90 degree line tie, you can actually drag them and they're going to roll up a little bit and actually look like a bait fish feeding on the bottom. But 90% of the time, if I'm throwing these, I'm looking for some sort of reaction strike. So the very first thing I'm gonna do, and like with anything, when you make a cast, you want to make the longest cast you can possibly make, a bomb cast. That's why I like the longer rods. So you're gonna make the longest cast you can, cast completely past the school, not into them, and then you're going to basically rip that off the bottom. Now you're gonna follow it back down once it hits, you're gonna rip it off the bottom again. So it's just like fishing a spoon. You're gonna allow it to sink, you're gonna rip it up, and you're gonna bring it back. Now you can do a slow rise, you can control how you know much of a rip or a raise you're giving that. You can raise it slowly, change that up. Now, 
my favorite retrieve on these by far favorite retrieve and a lot of times this is where that paddle tail swim bait comes in is the same sort of retrieve that i talk about with my spoons that not a lot of guys do again long bomb cast we're gonna let it go to the bottom and we're gonna give it about three to five really fast cranks as fast as you can turn the reel that's gonna shoot that bait up off the bottom it's gonna pinnacle and then it's gonna slow fall and you'll feel it especially with an ounce you'll feel that almost thud on the bottom now as soon as it hits another three or four cranks it's gonna shoot up off the bottom so you're really getting such a change in speed that this bait is moving. You're getting it setting still, shooting up off the bottom quickly, and then fluttering back down and setting still again. 90% of the time, that's how I get bit. That retrieve right there gets me killed. A lot of times when that bait falls down, they'll follow it down and then when it just takes off suddenly man they they'll destroy it hey guys that is really it i mean it's just that simple to fish these things and it's super fun if you find them suspended or stacked up you know the way that most guys tell you they're not bass or you can't catch them to go on well, I don't know about y'all, but if you go back and watch a lot of my fishing videos from last summer, I showed a lot of graph footage. I caught a lot of those types of fish. So, you know, is what it is. So as always, questions and comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk fishing with you. And this is my favorite time of the year. Forgive me, I'm not pumping out the fishing videos yet. And the reason why is because we're finally getting our house. So we put the down payment on it. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of details about the house, but but we're finally getting it, guys. It's been a two year process for us. It's been all kinds of crazy battles, but anyway, we're finally getting it. And so that means, you know, I kinda gotta divert my some of my fishing days to packing, getting stuff ready, paperwork, blah, 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 anyway. So forgive me, bear with me, but trust me, I'm not gonna miss, I'm not gonna miss my ledge fishing, all right? All that being said, guys, tell me if you've ever used these baits before and uh, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. We're gonna really get on some ledge fishing. We're gonna also get on some grass fishing this year. Uh, if you've not been keeping up with me on Instagram, Bass Geek Fishing on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, I gave my little boat a new set of wheels because the old boat or the old trailer floats. Yeah. So anyway, but like I said, and like I always say, I appreciate all the support I get from you guys and you guys, you guys stinking rock, man.